Hey guys, welcome to the channel. It's Jack with Stronghold Strength and Conditioning. And today, we're talking about the eight biggest diet problems that you'll face and how to handle them. But before we get into that, make sure you take a moment and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future content like this. Every Thursday, I'm putting out videos on resolving pains, preventing injury, and optimizing your performance as a human being. Ready? Let's go ahead and get into it. All right, guys, and the topic of the day is the eight biggest diet problems that you will face and some tips on how to begin to tackle them or overcome them. Now, the data for today's video is coming from Precision Nutrition, who polled 100,000 different clients to gather this list of the top eight. And guess what? What to eat doesn't even break the top 10. So it's not like people are sitting there about to take a bite of that nice green salad and saying to themselves, ah, I really shouldn't be doing this. So we'll be counting down the top eight today, going from number eight all the way down to one and going over some tips for each of those as we work through them. Now, if you guys need some help with your nutrition, I've got a nice free guide available for you down below in the description. It's called Recalibrate. These are my nutrition guidelines for mobility and human performance. So optimizing your cellular capability to output energy, making sure that your tissues are in the prime state that they need to be in to be moving your best and functioning at your best and minimizing inflammation in your body as much as possible. Ready? Without further ado, let's get into the list of the top eight here. Number eight, I drink too much. And if you're already nodding your head with this one, don't feel bad. You're with 30% or more of the population that Precision Nutrition polled here. So I drink too much seems to be a common habit. Part of the problem is we don't always know how to identify what is too much. You might be wondering if three or four glasses of wine each night to take a little edge off before you go to sleep is too much, or if you're just one that doesn't drink through the week and then the weekend comes along and it is fair game, that might be where you're more of in the category there. But either way, it can be something that can be a challenge. If you are not to the point where your drinking is what we'd consider a serious problem, there's no real point to necessarily putting the brakes on hard here, but maybe taking it a little bit more gradually. So something that you could do to help improve this would be thinking of what's one way that I could take a step in the right direction and thinking of it as a continuum rather than a hard switch. So if you're doing three or four drinks a night for wine before you go to sleep, maybe you cut it back to three drinks or two drinks. If you're drinking and you're out on the weekends, maybe it's taking water in between each drink and really taking the time to slow down and savor the drinks that you are having. Because the reality is that drinking does have an effect on our quality of sleep, our judgment process, and the overall stimulation of hunger that we feel. So you might be drinking and making poor judgments after getting those nachos, getting a pizza, or you're just simply hungrier because you've been drinking, so you're eating a little bit more as well. Those are things that could affect your overall progress and goals as far as trying to lose weight or improve your body composition overall. Number seven, I don't have time to prepare meals. And this one, let's be honest, I mean, you're running place to place every day. Things are backed up against one another. There's barely time to breathe half the time. And if you can sink into the couch 30 minutes sooner, then why wouldn't you by getting takeout? Okay, and yes, it's not the best thing in the world, but we can do this on a continuum once again. So if you're only making, you know, one meal a week right now, are you able to add one more meal? can you add in another one after that eventually as you get more comfortable with that schedule? It's about progress, not perfection here. So we wanna make sure that we're 
at least taking steps in the right direction by cooking one or two more meals each week as opposed to simply just settling in and saying that I don't have time. And let's be honest, there's a lack of desire that goes along with that. We know that it's, it's hard to add that extra bit in, but once you kind of get comfortable doing one extra day, of preparing one extra meal, then it becomes a little bit more natural and once again it becomes more of a habit. So we're working on building habits which eventually turn into skills down the road that will overall help you continue to take steps in the right direction. Number six, I eat larger portions than I need. Now let's be honest once again, most of us were raised in the conditions of finish your plate, make sure that's a clean plate. There's children in Africa that are starving that would love that food that's on your plate. I know I was one of them, and that's okay. It's just the way things were at that point in time. So mom, if you're watching, I apologize for that right now, but I still turned out all right. It's also not uncommon because of every restaurant you go to, the serving sizes are tripled as opposed to what the normal serving size might be. So what we see as normal serving sizes is blown way out of proportion and what might be a normal serving size right now is uh, might seem pretty skimpy on that scale and it's psychologically messing with us because of that here's a few ways that we can start to fix this one eat very slowly it takes about 20 minutes for our bodies to start to recognize that food has made it to our stomachs and we get that feeling of some fullness or satiation from that meal. So eat slowly, pay attention to your hunger cues of how full you are after that, and only eat to about 80% full. Okay, so how do I know that I'm eating to about 80% full? Well, it's not a perfect science, obviously, but making sure that you're leaving some on the plate. And don't feel bad about leaving some food on the plate. There's nothing wrong with that. The portion size you know is out of control, so we have to make sure that we control what we can, which is our hunger signals and the amount of food that we put in our bodies based off of that. Things that'll help you eat slowly, putting down the fork in between each bite, taking a drink in between each bite, or even just taking two breaths in between each bite. So we're making sure that we're really spacing out the time that we're eating. And this can be a very effective strategy. As simple as it may seem, it can be very powerful because it draws a better awareness to the intake that we actually have. Number five, I eat out a lot. All right, and this one can be a very challenging one for people because either, once again, it goes back to that busy schedule that we have or simply it's a social thing a lot of the time. But if you're able to actually plan ahead of time, if you know where you're going to eat and you can kind of look at the menu and pick ahead of time, something that fits within your dietary uh, guidelines that you're looking to meet, then that's a win in the first place. If you show up ready to order something that you know fits your dietary needs, then you're less likely to just jump into whatever looks good on the menu at the time or smells good if someone's got a plate of pasta right next to you and you just want to indulge in that carbonara. Uh, it might be a little less likely for you to just dive in and choose that as opposed to making a good decision that fits your nutritional goals right now. So that's one way to look at it. Now, the other way to see it is if it's a unique restaurant that you're going to that you've never been to before, you know, is that just something that you really want to indulge that day? Because it is unique and the food is meant to be, you know, something that you can really savor and enjoy. Then why don't you? Because if you're not going to do that place that often, then, well, enjoy it. But, you know, still do things that help you reach your goals in the long run. So maybe in that dish, savoring it once again comes back to slowing down, eating very slowly and only eating about 80% full on that. Or is it a place that you go frequently and the food isn't anything necessarily special or out of the norm that you might eat? And if that's the case, then are you going to go ahead and just stick with your nutritional guidelines that you're trying to hit at that point in time? But either way, what you want to check in is to see when you're finished, are you satisfied with how you feel at the end? Meaning, you know, if you didn't fulfill 
the nutritional guides that you were going for, those goals, if you didn't hit those, was it at least satisfying in the form of you got a meal that was unique and you really enjoyed it and you didn't necessarily go overboard because you took your time savoring that meal? Or did you eat at a place that you normally eat at and you still ate something that didn't quite fit your guidelines and you're a little bit disappointed? Um, next time, maybe you eat something that's got a little bit more plant-based diet filled with it. Maybe you focus on the protein content that comes with it. Maybe you eat that portion slowly and only 80% full again. So these are strategies that you can apply once again in this type of situation to help you make good choices if you are eating out too frequently. Number four, I have a serious sweet tooth. <laughs> you're not alone I know that's not necessarily any comfort to the situation but know that you're not alone in the situation here now serious sweet tooth it is designed to make us fail there are foods that are loaded with sugar and salt and fat and they are called hyper palatable and the manufacturers design them to make us fail at our diet necessarily. <laughs> they want us to buy those things, they want us to actually consume those things because they're making money off it of course. But at the same time, they have an actual science behind it to help us want to consume more and more of those things. The best thing we can do here is set our environment up for success. So if it's at home, guess what? you're probably going to eat it. Just like if you have good quality nutritional food at home, you're going to eat it because it's there. Now, if you're keeping sweets around the house, you're practically setting yourself up for failure. So don't keep them around the house. See if you can set yourself up for a little success right there. If you're at the grocery store and you're one of those people that usually sees them as you're checking out, purchase something from you know the fruit section before you ever get there with that being intended to be the dessert that you're going to have or you know that little snack that you're going to have as you go make sure that you're strategizing to keep yourself as successful as possible making sure that you don't fall victim to just impulse buying number three i eat too quickly and this was one of the biggest issues for men specifically uh, ranking in at over 60% of men actually having issues with this right here. I eat too quickly. And personally, I know that this is something that I've always had to do um, previously in my previous work schedule. It was something I had to do with scarf down food and just the timing. There was never really a good chance to slow down and really enjoy and savor food in that way. So food has always been down pretty quickly by myself personally as well. So I can understand this one pretty well. If you're able to though, once again, taking the time to put a fork down, take a sip of water in between each bite, or take a breath in between each bite is gonna be as helpful as possible on that. So making sure that we're able to slow down and take the time to eat. The act of mindfully slowing down is a very powerful tool in this overall. I think a lot of times it's simply eating fast because of the circumstances that surround us and we're just trying to get the food down so that we can do whatever we need to get on to next. Number two, I don't plan meals. And this goes right along with the idea of not having time to prepare meals. But in that one, they specifically are saying that they don't have the resource of time. This is simply the fact that people do not have planning skills set up or they don't have the habit of planning set up very well at this point. And once again, we're going to go back to that idea of your ability to plan out meals as a continuum. So it's not a complete switch of I either plan all the meals out for the week or I don't. It's you're somewhere along that scale. So somewhere along that continuum, are you able to fall in the mid range there? improving upon what you're already doing. So if you're planning out one or two days right now for dinner, are you able to add another day? Are you able to add another two days? Or can you at least buy the produce that you're gonna need for the week because of that, knowing that you're gonna have 
two days extra that you're going to be planning out those meals for. And last but not least, the number one diet problem that you will face. Can you guess it before I say it right now? Drum roll, please. I can't stop stress slash emotional eating. So if you deal with stress eating or emotional eating, know that that was the number one problem out of 100,000 clients that they took data from. That's pretty huge. So how do you approach stress eating or emotional eating? Well, the key here is going to be to identify the trigger. So if you down a pint of Haagen-Dazs every time your mom calls, well, that might be the trigger that's just leading you to that habit that you always have. Or if it's something about thinking about your ex or something reminds you of your ex, then that might be triggering you to eat. The key, again, is awareness of the trigger that is doing it. So what you can do is start to take down notes as far as when you're triggering that response and what actually is linked with it. It's going to start to show you the pattern. And the very first part to fix this problem is gaining an awareness so that you can disrupt that pattern once you have the awareness of what's actually triggering it for you. All right, guys, there you have it. The top eight diet problems that you will face and some solutions to start to take steps in the right direction with them. If you guys like this video, make sure you let me know by clicking that thumbs up down below and share this video with a friend. You know they need help with this too. We all struggle with that nutritional stuff here and there. So take time to send it over to them. If you have any questions, make sure you drop them down below in the comments. And if you have not already, please take a moment and hit that subscribe button because you don't want to miss out. Once again, every Thursday we're putting out videos on resolving pain, preventing injury, and optimizing your performance overall. Lastly, if you need something tailored specifically for you and you need help coaching to get you through these nutritional challenges that you face, take a moment, drop by the website that is down below in the description, and fill out the coaching application. We'll get you headed in the right direction in no time. I want to thank you guys for watching today. See you next time.